there's a request that came in that really is probably about one of the most important things that any painter can be concerned about. This person asked, um, would you make a quick tip on how to show a light source on a made-up painting? Say I took six different objects or people or anything and want to put them all in one painting. I'm going to show you that right now. Our habit as, as painters too often is to focus our attention on what the image is. Well, I'm going to show you what a difference it makes according to what kind of light, what kind of, any kind of light, whether it's uh, your outdoors or indoors. I want to show you what a difference that light makes in the image. You have to watch what the light is doing. Now to do that I'm going to use, this is a, a piece of sculpture that nature did. Okay, I'm going to shine the light. Now, first of all, when you're looking right here, watch what happens when I put a bright light on that. Do you see how much that value changed? Do you see how much the color changed? Then if I begin to change that, I begin to make that light a little less bright and a little less bright. Do you see how that changes the image altogether? And that's just with the light in one place. Now, that's the kind of change you might see outside if the sun's in one position and there's a cloud that's moving over the sun and then the sun, the cloud moves away from the sun, you might see something like that. But then as the cloud moves over the sun, you might see something like that. That's the change that's made. You've got to take that in consideration when you're doing a painting or a drawing of that particular image. Now, I want to put, an, put the bright light back on. I want to show you something else. This point of view, or this coloration and the degrees of value can change according to position of the light. Now I'm going to change the position of the light and I want you to watch what happens. When I change the position and we have the light coming from the upper left, you see what happens there? You see how it gets a little bit darker on this side, a little bit lighter on that side? Now I want you to notice something else. Notice the cast shadow. Cast shadow is right there. Now, when that light changes position, say it gets a little bit more overhead, do you see how much shorter that cast shadow gets? That's what we mean when we say, uh, tell, uh, the cast shadow will tell you where the sunlight is. Now, if I change the position of the light again, I'm going to move it over this time. I'm going to move it around and move it over here. Now watch how those values switch. Watch how when I move it on this side, the darker values appear right here and the lighter values appear right in there. Now there's something else that we need to take note of too. And that is, what are people on the other side seeing? Now look at the other side. Do you see what other people who are on that side will see that image doing in shadow? If the light is hitting directly from your viewpoint, then if you're on the other side of that, you're going to see that in what we call backlight. That's uh, where the whole image is falling into shadow. And notice that cast shadow now is in front of the image. And you notice that as I pull the light up and make it more and more overhead, as you might see if the sun is beginning to uh, go more in the uh, noon portion of the sky. You notice what happens there? You see uh, some edge light. You see some light beginning to appear, but certain areas are still in shadow. Now let's do some other things too. Let's consider what if you are above looking down. If you're above looking down, I'll hold that. I'll hold that as if the sun is above. See what you're seeing? If you're above looking down, you're going to see the image differently, but you see one side of the image is in more light than the other side. 
And if you will notice where the, uh, the images that are closer to the light are brighter in value, or lighter in value, and those that are closer or further from the light are darker in value. Now let's go to the other side. Let's go, let's do a sunset. Let's say the sun is setting and it's setting in this direction right here. Now do you see what happens? If we're standing here on this side of the image, we're seeing the sun is getting is more directly aligned, or the rays of the sun are more directly aligned with the object itself. So it makes it very, very bright when the sun is setting. So and if I pull that around, say the sun is setting on this side. You see what happens there. And then as I pull it on around, let's say the sun is setting on the other side. Do you see what happens? As the rays of light are hitting, they are hitting in direct, they're hitting directly uh, perpendicular. The surface is wherever the surfaces are perpendicular is where that light is brighter. And then as they as the surfaces are moving away or turned away from the sunlight, not as, not as many light rays can hit it. And so that, those areas will be just a little bit darker. So as painters, if we don't take those things in consideration while we're painting, then we're only going to interpret the shape of the image, but we're not going to interpret the image exactly as we see it. So now this, I'm showing you this because it doesn't matter if you have one image, if you have two, or if you have a hundred. All those images should be shown under the same light. So if you want to do an experiment where you're putting a painting together and you're pulling images from different sources, different places, if you're using photographs, those images you're pulling from those different places might be under different light sources. What you have to do is to imagine those images under the same light source and how the light would be hitting each of the images and where the light would be hitting the strongest, where the light would be not hitting quite so strong, where the shadows are, where the cast shadows are. And those are the things that are going to enable, paying attention to those things, um, are, is going to enable you then to do a painting of as many images as you want from any different uh, uh, references or, or locations or from your imagination, but showing them under the same light source. So the light source is your key for unifying images in a painting because it is always going to behave the same. Uh, if the light is, is a direct light like we have here, if it's not interfered with by anything else, then those light rays Keep this in mind. Think of the sun itself as a nozzle on a hose. And as it's squirting straight ahead, though, where those rays are hitting the strongest is where your image is the lightest. You can look for that. You can always find it. Where the image or part, parts, of, parts of the image or planes of the image are tilted away from the light, the light source, not as many rays can hit it. Just like if someone uh, is on the periphery of a hose you're squirting water from, they're not going to get the strong hit of water that the person standing exactly perpendicular with that, that uh, squirt of water is going to get. So you can do this kind of experiment for yourself. You can, all you need is a flashlight. That's all I have here is a flashlight. So all you need is a flashlight and you can uh, line up a number of kinds of images in different locations and use a flashlight to s examine exactly what the light is doing, not to just to the whole image, but what it's doing to various parts of the image. Which parts of the image are lighter because of the lo in the in the area that is in more alignment with the light source, and which ones are getting a little bit darker because they're not quite yet aligned with the light source. So give that a try and I think you will understand how it's possible to create a painting from your imagination or create a painting from uh, images from different locations for different references and yet make them all appear as if they belong there because you have given the whole thing the same light source. 
Be sure and view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com, where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.